The choice for buying a PlayStation 5 is simple. It's $499, unless you don't care about having a disk drive, then it's $399. That simplicity was by design, said Sony Interactive Entertainment CEO and President Jim Ryan in an interview with The Washington Post on Wednesday. PlayStation announced earlier that day the pricing of the next-generation machines, and a November 12 launch date. We want to give gamers clarity, we want to give them certainty, Ryan said. We want to future-proof them so that they know the console they buy will be relevant in several years' time. It's a considerable capital outlay, and we want to make sure people know they are buying a true next-generation console. This is in stark contrast to the Xbox series of consoles, S and X, which offer more nuanced differences 4K versus 1440p resolution being one example, with an even greater price difference of $299 and $499 respectively. While the Xbox Series S will be the cheapest next-generation game console, Microsoft has caught some heat for a confusing branding strategy. Ryan also claims that the pricing of the PlayStation 5 machines was decided, quite early this year, and that Sony always intended to offer a version of the PlayStation 5 at the same price point as 2013's PlayStation 4. The coronavirus pandemic hit, however, and new issues about distribution emerged. The cancelling of the E3 event in June caused the entire industry to reconsider its plans. For now, Ryan said Sony will have more PlayStation 5 units ready for sale than they had PlayStation 4 units in 2013. About 2. 1 million PlayStation 4 units sold worldwide two weeks after its 2013 launch, with a million in the first day alone. For quite some time, in the early part of Covid, that picture was far from clear, Ryan said. Just as the supply things was unclear, would there be any market? Would anyone be allowed to go outside? Would any shops be open? This has been a year like no other. But all of that just reinforced our resolve, and the path we determined at the start of the year was absolutely the right one. Ryan said he's heard a lot of discussion about PlayStation's more old-fashioned approach to the gaming business, betting on its suite of first-party developer studios to deliver exclusive titles on a generational basis. We're not saying it's perfect, but it's our approach. We like it, Ryan said. We just like to be a bit more nuanced. No one can argue against the success of that approach. The PlayStation 4, with more than 112 million consoles sold over seven years, has had a stellar year with exclusive titles like, The Last of Us Part II, Ghost of Tsushima, and, Final Fantasy VII, Remake, which take up three of the top five spots for best-selling titles in 2020 so far. We have quietly but very steadily been investing in those studios, Ryan said. We now have, I humbly submit, four or five of the best studios in the world.